Hi everyone, Erin Diction here with the fifth episode. So yay! I'm keeping this going for once and not just, you know, giving up somewhere along the lines. Um, I did play with the settings a little and it's a little later in the day to, and it's raining. Yay! And, um, and so it is a little darker than last time and I guess I watched last time's episode and it wasn't as washed out as I thought it was so maybe that's just my screen and how it's picking up the colors but uh, hopefully this one isn't really super dark then either but I'm just gonna have to suck it up and do them at my at my uh, fiance's house and hope for the best while I'm there because he definitely has better lighting. I it's just a nicer it's a nicer open area with better lighting, and it's earlier in the day, so it will hopefully just be nicer. But um, where should we? Oh, I guess like always, um, you can find me like on Ravelry, um, Pinterest, which I'm Pinterest, Instagram, which I'm doing really badly about the photos, but I'll try to do better. And, um, I guess, like, email, like always, and you can start looking up my personal Facebook, I guess, as well. Like, I really, as long as you send me a message before you friend me, because if you don't, if you just randomly friend me, I'm not going to know who you are, and then I probably won't add you. But if I, if I knew you had found me through this, I'll, and you found me on Facebook, I'll be happy to hit, hit friend. Um... I don't do terribly a lot on Facebook, like I stalk Facebook, but I don't, I post every now and then, not very often. Um, I guess we can get right into all of the stuff. Uh, we'll start first with the booth, which now I have to have fingers crossed that I get accepted because I sort of knew that they only allowed one craft for, like one of each booth in. And then I forgot, and then I didn't send in all my stuff until, like, Friday. So hopefully I got a, I'm, I'm in still. Um, when I, when I called and talked to the woman, she had asked what I, what I was going to be selling, and she didn't say anything about it then. And then life got in the way, and I didn't send in my stuff either. So, fingers crossed. Nonetheless, I have to keep working, so... And if you hear people in the background, there's more family members here than normal, so I hate doing it when people are here. But either way, back to the booth stuff. So I started making up signs. Ignore the prices on it. It's just, well, actually, I don't care. It's my pricing. But I was thinking this would be all of my, my style of, like, I'd put out a box and then this will sit on the table by itself. And then this is just, um... Oh, not construction paper, because it's better than construction paper. It is what do you pe scrapbooking. Scrapbooking paper, that's what this is. And then I just found a really nice white marker. It is Recollections. I don't know, it was expensive. But it's nice and it's white and it reminds me of like a chalkboard. So I'm actually, I was thinking about adding like squiggly lines on the side or something cute like a flower up there in the corner. Just something to really draw your eye towards it. Or maybe even it would be cool if I could, if I could copy like crochet, um, visual crochet patterns in the sides for like a flower or something. That would be awesome. I didn't think about that until right now. That would be pretty cool. And then... I've been doing like hats and stuff of different sizes, so I was starting to worry like even if I have the box and I have like one price for the entire set, how am I gonna know like what size what? And then I just decided I was gonna cut up little um like construct not construction. This is just um they could be construction paper, any but I used the note cards. We have a bunch of note cards and I just cut one up. Sorry if it seems like I'm leaning. I'm doing this thing where it is uh, half the screen for once. So I feel like I'm just talking to half a screen. But um, if you can see, it's just a really simple. I just cut them up really small. And then I, I just put them at an angle so it has a little bit more shape to it. And then just wrote on it with another really nice pen. And this one is Zig Writer Memory System. It's still, it's, it's another, um, it's another... 
scrapbooking one and it's purple because I love purple purple and black I figured those were nice colors to go with but yeah and then I just punched a hole through it and figured I could just tie that on with a simple piece of string onto the hats that way I would know what sizes these were and the people buying them could know I guess if they wanted to but onto the hats then because that's all I've pretty much been making this week I made some other stuff but mostly hats We'll start with the basic ones, and I will have patterns to go with all of these because I use patterns for once. But this is just a simple newborn size hat. Don't ask me what the yarn is, I don't know. Um, a bunch of my friends are getting rid of yarns, and I scrapped it all up for this stuff. But just a simple newborn pattern. It's really, really nice. I, I don't really like solid hats ever, but this pattern is super easy, and this pattern was the basic beanie which it's done by busy mom's designs it's free it's in a worsted weight yarn and i used an h hook it says for an h hook i used an h hook but um the only problem is i felt like maybe not if depending on the yarn depending on how tight you crochet would depend on if this works out for the right sizing or not because i've had one or two of the um three to she has from newborn to adult sizes and I, f I did one in the three to six months, and it was slightly smaller yarn, and it came out much more newborn size. But, and it's stretchy, it's so stretchy. Like, so stretchy. But that might also be the yarn. <laughs> but I used that, and I, I mean, you can vary. I also added an extra row at the bottom and put um, some ribbing on it. Don't know if you can really see that that's ribbed, but... I did some crochet ribbing at the bottom of this. But you can make different variations of it. Stripes. Because I have to keep reminding myself it's going to be Christmas time. So I made some Christmas colors. Uh, I added some tassels to this one. Wow, that's really dark. Sorry. <laughs> but I added tassels to this one just for some extra flair. And I don't think I grabbed out the larger sized hat. I could swore I did, though. Oh, I did. It's just hiding. And then if you can see, this is... Wow, that's really dark again. Hopefully this is showing up. Newborn size. And then this is the bigger size. And then I'm going to see if it will demonstrate a little better. See? It's bigger. About that much bigger. So it's a good... It's a good difference between sizing, which is nice. I like to see the difference. Like, I don't want it to all look the same and you hope that they fit. This definitely looks like a larger baby hat. And that's probably like three to six months and the rest were about newborn size. It's really, like I said, it's a really great little pattern. Um, then after that, I tried the shell stitch beanie, which is this one. Let me see if I can... Do you see the shell stitches in there? There we go. And then that's the hat as a whole. I really didn't like this top area. Like, I understand you have to build up and everything. But because they use single crochet in there, it gets really stiff. It doesn't... It doesn't give like a really nice half double crochet can give or even a double crochet can give. I feel like single crochet is very tough when, after you build it up. And so I didn't really enjoy the way it worked up in the beginning. I mean, it makes a very pretty pattern in the bottom, but this part I didn't really enjoy. But like I said, that shell stitch beanie, it's done by Dainty Daisy. It's free. It's supposed to be like Aran or Worsted. I used mostly Worsted or even Sports Weight and it came out fine. You are supposed to use a J hook in this one, but I ended up only having an H hook on me. So I just did a size up and it came out to be the newborn size. I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be like the three to six month old. Um, next, I... And then I did... Did I did the basic beanie? I went and did... Mc, McKinley's spring hat, springtime hat. And again, it's free. It's done by Kristen Spitzer. It's supposed to be like Aaron, but again, I used a lot of worsted and sports even for it. 
and it has a newborn and toddler, but I would definitely say it was much more of a, like a three to six month old newborn size. It was definitely bigger. So all I, when I realized it was bigger, my first one was too big for, um, to be a newborn size. I used the basic beanies setup, like the start out to how big a, the baby would get for the top part of it here. And then I just used, because it's all, you only need to be, it needs to be divided by three. Whatever number you get to, it needs to be divided by three to be able to do this, this stitch pattern that they have on this hat. And, uh, so the setup for the basic beanie, the newborn and the three to six month olds are both, um, divided by three. You can divide them by three. And so I knew it would work. And so I set it up for a newborn size at the top. Sorry. The ring keeps catching inside of these ones. And let's see if I can show you the pattern. Oh, maybe I should use the other one. I did that hat and then I did this one, but this one's going to show up a little better. But you can see the pattern work there. And I feel like this is much... Well, this is actually the same size as these. It's the same size as the other one I measured. Let's put it that way. It's about half a half a stitch shorter, that's all. But it comes out to about the same width, of course, but it's a little short on this one. Probably half a stitch, because I did half a row down here. And that's all. But I think this one, this one's perfect. So it depends on your yarn. Yeah, this one's perfect. Depends on the yarn that you're using with it. That one was a little slightly, slightly thinner yarn, a slightly... But yeah, and that was all the patterns. Like I said, they're all free. I'll link to all of them. I will, maybe I'll make a um, project page for the, McKin the McKinley one. And then I will, I will better, better go through how I, tra like how I differed from the pattern. Also, I didn't do the bottom. The bottom, they only, they call for like three or four rows of like single crochet. But again, like, to me, single crochet makes a really tough fabric, so I just did an extra row of the double. Well, actually, because I was using this as my base pattern, I went as many rows down as they say to go down. And then I just did a row of half double at the bottom, just to finish it off really nicely. But I feel like it, it gives a little better. It's not as tight as uh, it could be. But that's all the baby... I mean, that's all the baby hats I pulled out. I made, like... 10 or 15. I'm going towards 15 of them. I want to have like 20 before before tomorrow is over. But that's all of that stuff. Again, fingers crossed that I didn't mess it up and I, I will have a booth. Um, but on to the next thing. And the next thing is just, uh, last week I told you all I bought, sorry if you hear the crinkling from the bag as I'm pulling my stuff out. Uh, last week I told you all I went up to well, two weeks ago I went to New Mexico, and we were at a fair, the Taos Wool Festival, and uh, and all that fun. And I know I forgot to put up all the photos, but I will try to remember to do that tonight from my phone. And I forgot last week to um, sorry, I'm rolling up, I'm rolling up the one yarn. I got really impatient. Well, actually, I ran out of knitting to do. And so I decided I was just going to start knitting one of the balls of yarn when I really didn't want to knit what I was going to make. And uh, and so I started knitting it up. And now I'm just tearing it back out. But either way, so I said I bought some yarn and I forgot to show you all. And now I will. So forgive it that it has this, but hopefully this will... Oh, I hope it's showing up right so dark out here. I'm going to hope for the best and hope that's showing up properly on that. But it is a... I'll take a picture if it doesn't. But these are super, super bright, bright colors. How about this? I will Pinterest this if it does... or Pinterest. Instagram these photos if they don't show up as bright when I go to watch this back. There we go. That's just about as bright. It's a little more of a teal color. And then the one that really caught my eye. Oh, it's definitely more of a bubble. It's more of a uh, hot pink and not a bubblegum pink. I'm not a bubblegum girl. But I can do a little hot pink. And then I'm, I'm not picking the purple back up. It looked horrible. 
but these are all going to be hats. I'm not sure if I'm going to do all four colors. I'll probably just do two and two. Like the yellow and let me see if I can do this. The yellow and the blue are to go together. And then the purple and the red were going to go together. And sets of two for hats, slouchy tree hats. And this is going to be a really quick episode, I guess. Um, maybe. We'll see how this next little bit goes. All right, I need to put this down because I'm just getting distracted by yarn. <laughs> but um, if if any of you, I will, this I will show you how I made this too. But if you are into spinning your own yarn or working on fleeces, you'll know what this is. But if you don't, these are called combs. And no, they're not a medieval torture device, even if that is what they become at one point. But um. There would be normally two of these, but I don't normally do it the way you're supposed to, and you would have two of them, and you always point them away from you because you do not want to point this at you, and you put the wool on it, and then you would comb it back and forth and back and forth off of here onto the other comb, and then you go back and forth and back and forth with the other one. These are sharp. I would, if you ever buy them, I recommend having your tetanus, like I'm poking myself right now just touching them, but I recommend having your tetanus strap because when you're, when you're beating it down on there, you're more than likely to catch your hand on this. So I actually mostly actually go side to side just so I don't do that. There's been many times I've caught blood off of these. But like I said, I don't I don't do that very often because of the stuff I work just doesn't need to be worked like that. And one second, I am gonna hope this works. Nope. Sorry, I'm trying to get this back to a full there we go, back to full. <laughs> Sorry, I was playing around with the computer today and I wasn't 100% certain about all of this. But, um, yes. So, this is my comb. And then, like I said, they're sharp. So, I ended up making myself, not with the rubber band on it, little covers. I made these. Um, I just went into the craft store and they have those really thick foam, like, normally the little foam pieces are really tiny and thin, but they have, like, thicker ones now. This might be the normal sized one, but I'm pretty sure about the thicker ones. And then I just took a Sharpie, measured out my tins, and measured out my tins, and then made a square out of it. And then I bought fancy uh, duct tape, just because I really wanted fancy duct tape. One of them. And I just duct taped it all together. And then this is a inside of it. You can see I just tucked all the duct tape up inside of it. That's wool. It does get some of the fiber stuck to it, but that keeps. I mean, they sell them like on Etsy and some of the places that make the comb sell these. But this was like two bucks. I mean, the 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 tape was more expensive than two dollars, but all the tape I used on it, it was like two dollars to make these. And I made two of them um, because there's two things. <laughs> but yeah, and I mean that just keeps you. I mean, at one point I probably, I'll probably want wear this part of it out, and then I'll just have to make them again. But it keeps you safe, because my worst fear was, um, even if I sat them somewhere safe, what if I tripped and fell on these? If you watch too many episodes, too many um, Final Destination movies, that will do that to you. But that is not what we're doing today. So I need these, and I'm just gonna set this on my computer for a second. And then if you, if any of you remember, I um, had all of those fiber samplers. And here's just some of them that I washed up. Hopefully the words come out right. This is, it all says raw, but I washed them by now. Dursdale. There's Dursdale, and you can even see, I'll pull it out. This is a very, very hairy, like doll's hair kind of fiber. I'm not spending that one today, especially not a little bit on camera, so let's see. And then we have Denth Heat, Drenth Heat. I will put um, names to all of this because I have a list of them that I own, what I have upstairs, and I'll pull this one out. Again, it's a very hairy, hairy sheep. 
And when I say hairy, I mean like your hair. It's coarse. It's not soft. It's not wooly. Well, the base of this is a little more wooly than that one was. But it's not wooly. It's more like human hair. It's more... Yeah, it's definitely just more like hair, if that makes sense. This almost... I wonder if this was double-coated. I'll have to do some research. Because the bottom of this is very... Very much like wool, but the this pieces up here are much more like hair. So I'm thinking that's double coated. And it kind of got meshed together. Then we have a... I might do that one, so we're not going to pull that one up. Very raw. Oh, very rare. <laughs> Read the wrong side of the bag. It's very rare. But this is Borier. Bor Borier. 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 But, oh, maybe if I held it up here, we would be in business. But if you can see, this is much more wooly. And let me see if I can get a staple. Oh, it's a little longer than I thought it would be. It's maybe two inches. Maybe an inch, somewhere in there. But it's much more soft. Much more soft. I, look, I have to be really particular about washing out my fleeces. Because I can't do lanolin. It actually, um... It gives me a slight reaction, like it's not like I'm allergic, but my hands get really red and itchy and I just, it's not comfortable. And the light is, I'm losing the light by the second, I think. <laughs> and, uh, and so when I wash it, I wash like super wash. And so nothing ever smells wooly in my house after it's been washed. And then this one is New Zealand Pol Polworth. And it actually has a brownie tint to it. It's soft. It's short, it's very crimpy. And then I'm just gonna see if there's anything else I really have to show you guys so that I can do up some of this. Hmm. Do I wanna do this one up? I'm gonna do this one up. This is Santa Cruz, and it's actually really rare. They come off of an island, I think, off of California. Off of somewhere in that area, I think, where it's called Santa Cruz, and they they were sheep there, and they're kind of wild. So now they're they've been catching them, and shearing them, and selling it, of course. But it they're unique to themselves because they weren't really a breed, but now they are. I think something along those lines, if I'm right, when I looked them up. But it's really short. At least this stuff is. It has a little bit of VM in it, which is fine. If you, if you don't like VM, you don't work with raw fleece. But you can see it's very short. It's very puffy. It's not crimpy. It's not curly. It's just a lot of fluff. But I don't know if you could do this with a full fleece. But because I only have um, a fourth of an ounce, I'm going to have to drop this just a tad. But I take these and I just take it and I just slide it over. And I just lightly t pull out, just to get some of that, the little bit of VM that is in there. And if I find any of the ones I don't like that's not very neat. I'm just trying to make all of this go neatly. Because the way I do it, if I had the second tins after I put this on, I would run the tins back through this. And that's what makes it nice and neat and clean. But I'm just trying to keep everything in order. That's all I'm trying to do. Because I have such small amounts. Trying to keep keep make sure I'm keeping this high enough because I normally would do this right in my lap and just sit this right on my knee and be working that way. And if you see, sorry, that's a new thing. And if you see any of the big pieces that just aren't coming out, just pluck it away. Again, I am by no means doing this the proper way. It's just how I've learned to do it because of the stuff I normally work with like Angora I learned to do this with the Angora because you don't have to have it clean I just needed to keep it in order so that when I pulled off a bunch of fluff it wasn't like I didn't just pull it out of the bag and spin it whatever which way I was spinning it in a direct direction and so that just kept everything nice and clean and uh, I'm just pulling up whatever is coming off so that like I said it will be nice and indirect in the direction 
I want it to be going. Right in there, you can see all the fluff that's sitting on it. Now another nice thing about this cover that I made, if I don't spin it all at once, I just go like that. And it's all there. And this keeps it all nice and in there. Alright. And then I have my moosey, which is what at this moment at this point that's what I've been spending most of these on. I've only spun two of them. But um I don't I don't prefer to spin a lot like a heavy weight on this. Like if I had a whole pound of fiber, I wouldn't probably spin it on this because it weighs so much that it's hard to put a lot more weight on it without feeling like I'm going to drop it. I'm going to push this back up. Sorry if I'm making any of you all sick. But, um, but yeah. So, but because I'm only doing like a, a fourth of an ounce, um, it, it's not too heavy. And because I'm only doing fourth of an ounce, I can't get a steady, I don't feel like with like Support spindle, I like to do them for long periods of time. If I had a whole pound to do, I would do it on a support spindle because the longer you go, I feel on those, the 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 easier it gets. These, this one, it's much better for just a sm small little stint. And then we're gonna see if I cannot make a fool out of myself and spin a little bit off of here. So I just I just pull off a little bit, and then I just I just always tug out, especially with this one. It's a very grabby little fiber. So FYI, Santa Cruz fibers are grabby. It reminds me much, a lot like, I wouldn't say Polworth. It reminds me of Cotswool. I think Cotswool is the one I'm thinking. It's, it's either Coop, Coopworth or Cotswool. That's very, it's a very dense feeling fiber. We're just going to take that little bit of something off. And then I no longer need a lead line. So what I do is I just tuck a little bit of fiber around. And I spin it out real. Well, if I don't almost make lace weight in the first couple seconds, we'll be in business. And then. And then I'm just doing a really simple. This is drafting really nicely, actually. It's a very nice little grabby fur, fur fiber. Um, which I guess it's fur, but it's a very grabby little fiber. It doesn't feel like it's, it's taking a little bit more effort than like, let's say a, a, uh, merino would take or, um, or anything super wash. It's very slippy. You'd almost have to keep it from slipping apart. This is much grabbier and it's feeling like it's taking less spin to get a really put together yarn. And I'm not, other people would be freaking out because they're getting slubs and all this other stuff in there. I'm not looking for a really nice yarn with this. My project, I want it to look rustic, if that makes sense. I want it to look like, I want it to look like it almost could have just come off the sheep and I just wove it up in the morning really quickly and I made a blanket or a, a jacket out of it. And if you've been following me, you know that the samplers to be a coat of many fleeces instead of a coat of many colors and so I wanted to make all these samplers into a fleece in the end so maybe I'll maybe when I have time I'll just do like a sampler every single time we're on here or every time I have a moment and so and then I'll just talk about it maybe that will be my way of logging it instead of writing it all down for nonsense reasons I'll just I'll just tell you guys about it each each one I spin up as I'm on here. But yeah. Oh. It was coming apart there at the top. But yep. It's a very. And if you can see that, just in a couple seconds, I got maybe a yard of, of it spun up. And that will probably be the same yard that will be on it next week because I really don't have a lot of time at the moment to be spinning. Um, unfortunately, I love to spin, but it takes time. But yeah, I think that's just about everything I have to talk about. I've been busy this week. Let's just put it that way. I've been very, very busy. And I'm losing light, so I don't really want to be doing more than I have to. 
But yeah, I'll, I guess this is all for this week, and I will be back again next week. Bye!